a really cool uh, woman, very successful woman, um, she recently gave me this book, um, The Secret, and uh, I just want to know, like, have you guys uh, read it? And if so, is it is it worth reading? Um, of course it's not worth reading. There is no secret. There are no shortcuts. It is hard work, hours of study, learning from the past, doing what others will not do. Read Ray Allen's blog post to get the fucking chisel of what I'm talking about. Like, I was recently forced uh, to watch Fantastic Beasts. It's a new movie from the Harry Potter lady, uh, J.K. Rowling. And it's at the cinema now, where the magic creatures run around New York City. And the movie was a bit shit. But all I could think is, half of the traders that I'm learning with should be a part of this movie. Living in a suitcase in a magical world with giant animals, where money is giving to them for pressing buttons doing no work against fucking sharks in the market. Okay, so look. What's up? What's up, guys? It's great to be back with you um, in December, and it's getting into the holiday season, so a very early Merry Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving for you guys. I know that you kind of had it a couple of weeks ago. Um, how's the week been? I mean, I broke even last month. How's it been? Honestly? Honestly? And uh, probably one of the worst weeks I've ever had. Um, and it's a mix of maybe getting a bit overconfident through, through becoming break even. And it's also like sometimes, like honestly, at times I've felt like Oliver Twist, like begging for more plays. And I'm just not there yet. Um, I'm $110 down, uh, over traded a lot, made a lot of stupid plays. Some of the worst that I've ever done, which you'll see in this video. And it's just like, like, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I thought I was there yet. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm so good. But when with knowledge, you'll you'll get more and more successful. And and like back in the day, like I used to I used to like randomly buy a stock and kaboom, like Stephen bought it. So it goes red and it drops 10 or 20 percent. And then I started catching the, the stocks on the uptrend. But I'm, I'm, I'm not always picking the perfect stock and uh, and I'm losing maybe one, two percent. But but when I do pick the right stock, like I make it and, and the in the fucking Christmas miracle, the Christmas miracle here is that I've made about seven trades and I'm and I lost six of them and I'm only down $110. And that comes from cutting losses. Um and yeah, I mean it's just being a bit more choosy with the players. You'll hopefully only see three, four trades next week because I really want to be more disciplined with the trades that I'm picking. And honestly, like the most important lesson it, it, it's detailed in um Cara and BNSO, I think. And you'll see it in the trade, and it's you've got to respect support and, and resistance, and and you've got to respect volume. And sometimes you don't need to respect support and resistance if it's such a low flow and there's such high volume. But you've got to like work out what you want to prioritize. And and that's I learned a, a huge amount this month. I still think I can I can turn break even or become profitable because I cut me losses so quickly. And I mean, in Tim's words, it's like refine, 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 optimize, optimize, optimize. Um, this is not impossible and it's not impossible for you either and even if you break down the word impossible it means I'm possible so like I'm very fucking I'm dope very pleased I mean I did kind of lose me shit this month after losing six trades in a row and think I'm just gonna trade cool because I'm cool but it's not fucking cool to trade cool and that's a whole nother story but you'll see it in the lesson um, and I just want to detail this so yeah, I mean, let's get to the trades. Uh, just one last thing, you can follow me on the different social channels, uh, profit.ly, I'm trying to be one of the top 10 profit, most uh, popular traders on there, and I'm very close, I'm like 19th or 18th, so follow me, junkie87, to see all the trades, I update them all there, you should too, I recently wrote a blog post about this, Twitter, junk 87 Snapchat, junk1987, I trade live there, stephenjohnsonstocks.com, a lot of blog posts on there, and on profit.ly, if, if you check junk 87 but I just want to leave you with the fact that like I will not stop trading and not stop learning like because I'm a doer like I'm a doer and I do things and like I will fucking I will become a successful trader I will fucking die trying because for me like I can just see the vision so clearly and uh, you can do it too and if you fucking lost that all of this stuff um, I learned through Tim, I learned through Tim's challenge, I was losing 30-40% a month, I joined Tim's challenge and now I'm pretty much break even month on month, 
And um, the only reason I'm not is because I kind of broke the rules. Tim's challenge is fucking awesome. The, the webinars and the DVD content will bring you into break-even profitability, or at least it has for me anyway. And if you do the preparation and work, it will for you too. Silver's cool as well. Um, you, you need to see what Tim's trading um, to kind of learn, and you need to get the video recaps. And people are like, oh, it's the, there's lots of video recaps, but what else? And I'm like, you, it's not just the, the video recaps. Like, you need to like follow the watch list religiously um, and you need to be in the chat room. That's the whole point to see what trades are breaking out. So please click the affiliate link. Um, a couple of you guys have already joined the affiliate program. It helps me because the sooner I make more affiliates, the more money I have and the more I can put in my account. And eventually maybe one day I can trade full time. So I really appreciate it. Um, and that's it. Just enjoy the trades. Enjoy the trades. Enjoy the journey. And guys, like I don't know how else more times to say this, but you live once. It's one life. Don't work in a shit job your whole life that you don't like. Like, I'm lucky I really enjoy my job. I work in advertising and it's fucking epic. But if you work in a job that you don't like, like, fucking study day and night until, like, you can sleep when you're dead. Sleep when you're dead. But just work hard and get out of that shit job. Very quick recap. Um, Just looking at a couple of the trades overall. I mean, if you guys are interested, I can show you guys very, very quickly. Um, where I'm at for the month. Um, don't want to labor on it too much, but yeah, I mean, $110 down in the in the first week. Um, I've traded more than this. I've traded about eight, and I've won like one. So my winning percentage is way lower than it normally is, even across the last few months. And um, it's a little bit of bad luck, a lot of over trading. Um, I can just quickly talk you through the trades. Um, but you'll see a lot more in the videos. Um, I pretty much over traded this week. Um, and it shows like NVCN was a good trade. Um, cool was ridiculous. Shouldn't have been in. There's no catalyst. FNMA, there was no catalyst. It had no long term chart set up. BNSO was a chat room pump, but I don't regret this. I just fucked up the order a little bit because um, it was a technical breakout in a strong cup and handle. Cara, I don't regret, but it was a tiny loss. FNMA, I got trapped in the stock. I shouldn't have played it. Um, ASNA, yeah, I mean, it had a catalyst. I don't regret it. But really, the only stocks I should have played, forget that both of the FNMAs, they wiped each other out. The only stocks I should have played was ASNA and NVSN, NVCN. The rest I shouldn't have bothered with. So on the whole, if I'd have traded normally, I would have been up $20 and had a 50-50 win ratio. And I would have probably not been so scared, so I would have held NVCN longer, and I could have made maybe $200, $300. So just to recap, like I really over-traded. I didn't wait for the right setups, and uh, I just kind of, all of these trades are just a waste of money. I mean, Cora, maybe not. NVCN, Cora, and ASNA are the only trades I actually should have made. The rest are a waste of commissions. ASNA, um, it was, um, it had, let's see. Let's go to the news. It's an earnings winner. I reported earnings on the 1st of December. Um, I mean, it does have this kind of death drop, which isn't isn't nice in September. But I mean, with it having earnings, it was a kind of a multi-month uh, multi breakout on seven, um, which was cool. And, and it kind of finished on seven, its multi-month peak. And I thought, you know what it is, uh, if it looks like it's going to run, I'll, I'll buy kind of, I got in at 7, um, 7.10 as it was starting to kind of grind up. And I thought, you know what it is, if it, if it has trouble in the 40s, I'll just sell it. Um, but the reality is it just, it didn't really get off to a good start with much momentum. I mean, I bought it in here in the 10s and it wasn't really doing a lot. Um, so I just sold it. As it happens, it's kind of got to the 30s and it's now fading. Um... But it just it just wasn't really moving very fast. It was like stuck in this channel, and I was like, it's not going anywhere. Just move on to the next stock. Fucking like this stock. It's a real motherfucker now. Um, and I just know that I know the price action when it runs, it runs. Um, and like you can see, even on the six month chart, I actually thought about buying it in the threes as well. The fucker will probably bounce. Um, but like. I bought it, um, let me just check the actual, actually I can just check on my phone. Um, I bought it in on um, 
FNME bought it at 354 and uh, you can see that it's kind of got this support and it was actually bouncing off this 350 support um, when you uh, it kind of it did gap down but and then it had 350 support here as well um, and I bought it and it was it looked like it was gonna bounce here off 350 so I bought it on the hope that it would bounce but um, it didn't which is fine so I was gonna get out with, within a couple of cents um, and um, yeah and it and I couldn't I couldn't get out it's a pink sheet and I literally couldn't get out which is a fucking nightmare um, and I thought it had a shot at bouncing but it, it didn't um, it just continued its downtrend and maybe it'll continue down to three and not come back up again um, but I mean is it a bad trade I mean honestly if it had bounced um, from the from the 350s to maybe the fours it could have been $250 and if it didn't I, and I got out straight away I would have lost $20 so I, I mean it's not a terrible trade I don't think um, should I have waited for more confirmation of it bouncing I mean yeah maybe I should have waited for a little bit more confirmation because I, I literally I bought it kind of here um, and it upticked upticked and then collapsed and this is the madness that I couldn't get out of and uh, maybe I should have waited but I mean you're losing money like I'm losing 20 cents a share if I wait any longer so no I don't think I should have um, but I just won't play a pink sheet anymore and that's pretty much it as a, an innings winner from way back when I'd imagine probably around the 14th because it's when it had its, its run um, I mean for me it's got a lot of support um, Again, dip buying just didn't work today, and it's weird because the markets are up. So I thought it, I thought it'd have a better chance. That's important. The kind of the the nines. Um, let me see where I bought it. Yeah, and I mean, I guess let's have a, a, a closer look in. This is not where I bought it. And then on the kind of the two day chart. Um, sorry, if we look at the if you look at the two-day chart, I was more interested in its its previous day support, which is more yeah. And I was just thinking I'll I'll just try and I'll just try, I know I know in the past it's kind of gone red to green. I thought I'll just try and dip by it, and um, I saw it I saw it dipping up, um, and I caught it in the 60s around here. I caught it in the the late 50s here, as it was kind of dipping back and I thought ah it's got it might have a shot yeah didn't quite catch it at its lows of the of the 40s uh, although maybe one or two people did but I caught it on this way back up and it, it tested the kind of the 98, 980s level which was kind of the here high 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 here and the high here um, and I thought ah this could break out and it might run like maybe to 10 or it, it didn't have resistance till about 10 after that but it just couldn't so again I, I sold for a very like a five dollar loss um, I mean, again, with a higher stake, it wouldn't have been a loss. Um, if I'd got out a bit earlier and didn't be so patient, but I thought it was, it was consolidating for a while, so I thought, like, I'll, I'll give it a chance. Um, so this is the bounce. This is about when I got in, when I got the confirmation. This is when I started trying to test the 975 breakout level, consolidated for a while and failed. Um, yeah, I mean, I wish I'd maybe, it doesn't matter, like, I got out in the late, tried to get out a bit earlier, but again, I couldn't get executed. But um, I mean, yeah, it's it's difficult to say. I mean, three trades. I don't think there's any major mistakes in any of them. Uh, this is BNSO, and um, j just to give you some context, it's a cup and handle, which is a really strong chart. It was a multi-year breakout. I mean, it's not on any news, but I think the chart speaks for itself. Um, I was in. If you look at the hour chart on this big volume I was in in the 370s I wanted it to prove itself to beat the pre-market highs as soon as it did I was in it ran up um, and when it had this first drop I wanted to give it a little bit of chance because I think it was ASNA or ASNO I didn't give it a chance and it, and it ran without is when I sold and um, so I wanted to give it a tiny chance and then the thing was when it didn't spike here on any particular volume I went to sell but the problem was I tried to be a bit greedy and I put my limit order a bit too high and it didn't get executed and then it tanked and that's the reason why I lost a bit. So should have been a break-even trade. This is not really what I'm bothered about. That's a, a simple um, 
pragmatic or practical thing. What the, what the real lesson is here is in the, the float, and it's a bit sad, but it's, it's, quite, it's crucial that I learn this now, but it's sad that as soon as you think you know everything, you realize that you've got to learn a whole lot more all over again. And, and that's been the case this week. I thought I knew most stuff. And then I kind of realized that there's a difference between knowing and doing. And like sometimes you learn stuff and then you don't do it any of it. And then, and then you do do it. But then you realize that you've got to learn a whole nother load of stuff that you kind of knew, but you, you haven't put it into practice yet. And, and this is the case with this week. I mean, with, B, with BNSO, it's a float of 1.78 million. So volume is going to affect it a lot more. And if you look at the month, let's not look at the month. Let's just look at the last 10 days because it's more important. Um, you can see the volume here. It had big volume here. It had big volume here, which is um, yesterday. And then it also had quite big volume here as well. And you've got to respect the volume because it's moving on this on this volume. Um, and, th and then if we just look at the, the two-hour chart, I mean, when it has this huge volume here, like, like I say, it's bigger than yesterday's volume. It's bigger than yesterday's morning volume when it ran. Um, it's actually bigger. But because it's only a 2 million float, like I was waiting for support. Like if you look, it's got support here in the 320s here. It's got support here. It's got support here. And if you go back six months, it's, it's also got support in the previous history. So I was waiting for it to dip to the 320s um, at 930. So I'll just take pre-market out to make it a bit simpler for you. Um, I was waiting for it to dip in the 320s. I'll just also take all these lines out. So 320 was where it had support. Like here, as you can see. And I was waiting for it to dip, but it didn't quite dip. So I thought I'll go to the forward chart here. I was like, I'll let it prove itself. It had this big volume, but the, the lesson is small stock, biggest volume it's had in, in more volume than it had yesterday. Just buy it because it's going to move the stop drastically. And I could have ridden a move from the 320s to the 380s. Okay, so it's it doesn't matter about support because it's got so much volume, you know it's going to take it up. And that's an important realization to make that just buy it when the big first green bar of volume comes in as soon as it comes in. Don't wait for reassurance because it's such a small stock. You don't need it. It's going to run at least 20 cents a share. And if it doesn't get a second green bar of volume, just get out. But the move was from the 320s to the 380s on the first bar of green volume. Now, that that's fine for BNSO because the volume is a, a good enough indicator that you don't, need for, you don't need to wait for the support, in my opinion. But on a stock like CERA, not waiting for the support is a mistake. Because, like, you can see on maybe this, it's crashing today. But if you look on a five-day chart, it's support. I mean, I was... Um, like it has support pretty much in the 940s. And uh, yesterday, I'll, I'll again, lost money. You can see it's got support in the 940s here. It's got support in the 940s here. Um, it, it's, it, it fell through support today, but let's not pay attention to that. But my trade was right here in this, in this uh, green candle here. I watched it. I watched it kind of, it spiked a little bit in the, in the morning. Let's go to the two day chart now, actually. It's gonna be easier to see. It's going to, sorry, I have to show five days because it's shown this day and this day. So like in the morning, we had this kind of little spike and then it kind of got, it dropped down and then it, and then it really dropped down here. This is a green spike, but it actually washed out because we're looking at a 15 minute time frame. Can I show you less? No, I can't. Sorry. Um, and you could have bought it at 940. So because this is a 27 million, 22 million float, the volume's not as big an indicator, more support is more of an indicator here because it's a bigger float. And I should have bought it at support at 940, but instead I chased it up to like, I was like, ah, I'll just jump in on the 960s, comes to the 80s, comes back down, and I lose money. But I could have buying it at support, been in in the 940s, and then at least sold it for a small profit or hung on and sold it maybe in the 960s here. But because I'd bought it not at support before, because I'd chased it in the 60s, when it come down to the 40s, I was like, oh, I'm down a mouse. Do you know what I mean? So in a bigger float, you need to rely on more support. On, on, a, on a smaller float, the volume can matter more. And it's just learning these slight nuances. Um, and I wish I'd taken them into account a bit more, but I didn't know. 
now I'll put it into practice because I've got more experience. And and that's the that's the lesson for me. And it's small subtleties. Um, like maybe right now I'm $110 down. I haven't really done anything terribly wrong. It's just small tweaks. And um, and even with these small tweaks, I mean, yeah, I would have been up maybe $150, $200 now. And, uh, and that's, that's just how it is. I'm not going to labor, labor on this trade very long because it's just a stupid trade in the first place. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, this chart's kind of all over the place. It, it, it I mean, it's, it had its run. It's funny because you can kind of see this penny stocking framework. It's kind of like a one, two, uh, two is about here, three, it went supernova, four, it went back down. Five, you could see this is a bounce, but I mean, does this fit ideally in the framework? I don't really know. Um, I mean, you can put it in the framework, and it is kind of running. Um, I got a bit scared. Um, let's have a look. I got a bit scared. I bought it in the 398s and sold it at 403. So I bought it around here when it was kind of breaking the high of the day. Um, and, it, and it did, it ran up to about 4543, and I sold it at the perfect time. I know this stock is fucking tricky to get out of. Because it's a shit little degenerate pink sheet. Failure fucking bank. Um, and so I, I sold on the green candle because I was too worried about getting trapped back in it again. And uh, it was a like couple of dollar loss, nothing. And yeah, and it's done nothing ever since. So I mean, I, I went for it. Um, got out when it was safe to get out. Not really any regrets. I mean, whatever. I didn't really lose anything. Uh, if it could have gone up more, who knows? With a bigger position, I would have beat commissions and took more profit. It's not a terrible trade, it's just a fucking uh, whatever trade. Uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to describe this trade as probably the worst trade of all time for me. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing where it is now, actually, because I haven't looked since. Um, yeah, it's fucking tanked, and I'm not surprised it's tanked. Um, I was in, in the... I was in, in the... Um, uh, I was in in the 593s now at the 575s. So like a fucking retard, I was I was chasing it all the way up here. And uh and uh and it's it came up to around the sixes and as it come back down I got out. And it's an absolute piece of, piece of shit junk company, and that's why it's straight right back at the fours. And anyone who is a degenerate enough to fucking have stayed in this, they've lost because it's up on no news and it's a stupid shitty stock. Um and I like and it's a perfect spike to short. Uh, maybe it's the type of thing Tim Gratani shorts from suckers like me being fucking degenerate gamblers. But, uh, I mean, it was a breakout. It was up quite a lot on, on no real news. And uh, I was just sick of losing trade after trade after trade. So I was like, do you know what it is? I'm just going to take a chance and chase this. Um, and I just got out as fast as I could when it started to drop. Because like a degenerate, I got in at the worst possible time, like all the other degenerates. And, um, and yeah, it's probably the worst stock I've ever traded in my entire life. And I'll just... And it's not because it was the biggest loss. It was because with the knowledge that I've got now and with the experience, it, it's fucking retarded that I did this. So I'm just going to leave it at that. It's a retarded, 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 retarded mistake. This is just basically the best fucking stock um, you can possibly pick. And uh, let's have a look. I'll let it show you so you can see what I mean. And this is NVCN, and it's literally just made... Ah, it's dropped down to red, but it literally just made this red-green move. And um, you can see on the level, too, it's, it's got a lot of support, so it's going to push through. But this red-green move, um, I mean, literally, I can tell you when. I was in on the... Um, let's have a quick look. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, I was in this um, 189 and out at 197. Um, so, I mean, let's just look at the chart first. It, it had this crazy run, which we all know about. I think it was on a contract with Boston Boston something. It was like a, a technical lab company or a research lab, but a well-known company for such a small stock. Um, the, the, the shares, let's just say the float. Yeah, I mean, it's got a pretty big float considering how much it moves. Um, but I mean, equally, it's it's traded 11 million shares today, so it's traded like a fifth of its float. So it's not much of a surprise. But um, yeah, let's, I mean, it's kind of, it had this run, and then we can see that, I mean, it's kind of, it obviously, it 
maybe there's a little bit of support in the twos and it was just above the twos but what's more important is the kind of the intraday support um it didn't do anything yesterday but then the what was interesting here was it, it fell and then it was holding support and we know this stock's volatile and we know it's really far down off its highs so you can expect a kind of a bounce here so i was i was in in the um the 87s um if we look a little clearer i, I was kind of freaked out um i think was this it's this was it's let's just try and look a little bit clearer so i can see exactly where i was yeah, I was kind of freaked out by this candle because I've been losing non-stop. So I just took profits, took about 50, 60 bucks. And then it had this kind of coil in action before it had another spike, dropped a little bit. And then this this is really the cool move, the red-green movers here. Um, and I think you could have bought it for the red-green here and you could have made from 95 to 215, 20 cents a share. But I held on from the 80s, I would have made 40 cents a share, which is 20% on two grand, which is like $400. And it just shows you that the players are here if you can find them and, it, and you can see them. I mean... On the long-term chart, it doesn't really it doesn't really look like a lot. It's like the first down day could be a short. Um, like a lot of people think that's oh, the first red day. It's a short. Um, but on the flip side, it's it's washed out and it's holding support. So with a bit of momentum, maybe you can run red green and it's it's not going to be a short for another day. So it's really tricky. There's a lot of nuances. Um, and it and it made me realize honestly, like I know I thought I knew a lot about the market. I don't. I know maybe twenty percent of of what the real top traders know or, or even the good traders know i know about 20 30 percent of what they know i've got so much more to learn and i've got so much to learn about because each stock's got its own personality and i just had a blow off a really bad week it's it's a fucking miracle i only lost 110 dollars this week because i lost like seven straight trades in a row but you've got to wait for the players you've got to be patient because like like i say i mean this is coming down i mean really this is the Let's have, which is the first red day? Let's have a look. This is the first red day. So this could have been a short, but when it's basing, it's not cracking. The, I guess the price action looks a bit volatile. Now it's run red green. What a move to capture from the 85s to the 210s. Just shows you the players are there. You've just got to find them um, and you've got to wait for them. And, and that's basically it. I'm just glad I took some fucking profit and I'm not a complete fucking loser. Like, and yeah, I mean, I'm not quite there at trading yet, but I'm better at other things. Like I'm, I'm good at tapping girls and I'm good at drinking, but I need to get better at trading. And uh, this is me. I'm signed off for the week now. I'm, I'm going for a few drinks with a girl tonight. Going to a brunch tomorrow. It's a work thing, and I'm done with trading. It's been a bad week. I'll recoup, chill out, study a bit on Saturday, and just get straight back to it on Sunday. That's a wrap, guys. That's a wrap. Long video, long video. I hope you guys stuck around. If you did, I want you to write I'm a doer in the in the comments box because I want to know who fucking gives a shit or who's just switching off and thinking, oh, I don't, I don't need to know this. Or like, I'm, I'm not so interested and I don't need to learn anything because you fucking do need to learn. If you're, if you're less than six months in, you need to watch this entire video like fucking twice and watch the fucking, watch all of the mistakes I've made. Like, you learn by people's losses, you learn by people's gains. You learn more through the losses than you do from the gains. Like, you need to be super, super, super duper, super duper, super duper analytical. Like, trading is on my mind all of the time. Like, and I overanalyze trade after trade after trade, and it's a fucking good trade to have. It's because I know it's to learn more. But anyway, like, guys, I can't say any more. See you guys next week. Hopefully, I'll be in profitability next week. I really do not want to be in a position where I'm a few hundred down, so I'll be trading much more cautiously. But the knowledge is up there. It's just about applying it. 